Hi everyone, my name's Jake and welcome to a brand new series called Mind Your Money. We're going to be discussing uh, money over the next uh, four weeks and it's going to be fantastic. I'm joined by the wonderful Stu and Margot Shutt, a great couple in the uh, Auckland church. And uh, Stu is the managing director of Sentinel Homes, one of the larger construction companies in Auckland. And really, they're expanding throughout the whole country. And uh, also, Margot, uh, former registered nurse and midwife, <laughs> uh, delivered many babies, maybe yours at home, we don't know. Uh, but also has been on staff with us in the Equippers Church in Auckland uh, as a children's pastor and also uh, done a lot of Bible college lecturing as well. So great to have you guys here with us. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Stu, I'm going to start with you. With this principle of money comes really, it's a stewardship thing, isn't it? Can you explain what, what does stewardship mean? Stewardship? Yeah, it's important that we have a good grasp of what stewardship is because it's not just about money. Stewardship is about everything that comes um, within our sphere. So it can be money, it can be our jobs, our careers. Stewardship can be looking after your body, your mental health, your spiritual health. You know, stewardship is everything. Um, and we're called very strongly right through the Bible from the Old Testament right through to the New to, to steward everything that comes into our sphere well. Okay, that's a big deal. So, so Margs, what does how, how can we define stewardship then? What does it actually mean to us? Okay, um... Well, stewardship, as Stu said, is about looking after what you have and doing really well with it. And um, probably the verse that I get or the thoughts that I get about stewardship when I think of it is from Genesis where God said that we um, were to subdue the earth and have dominion over it. Okay, and so that sort of means we really need to work things. Okay, we need to um, operate in a way by faith, by actually doing something with what we have. Okay, so it's really important that we um, are managing and looking after the resources at our disposal, time, talents and treasures, so, yeah. That's great. So, time, talent and treasure are things that, if you're part of Equippers Church, you might have heard those terms uh, referred to in a DNA class or something like that. Uh, how do we open that up? So, so, we're called to be good stewards with our time, our talent and our treasure. What does that look like practically oh, for us? Again, I think uh, it's important that we don't look at them individually. Okay. You know, I've had a lot of people come to me um, saying things like, look, I'm working really, really hard but not seeing any gains. Or, um, I'm giving, uh, I mean, I'm giving a lot of money, but I'm not seeing um, breakthrough. And, and I think what's going on in these situations, when you actually sit there and, and talk it through and look into it, is that um, the, the three times talent and the treasure. other treasure are interrelated. They're all connected. Right. And you can't do one and not the other. Yeah. It's important that we are working all three together. I mean, we're taught often um, to pray, but yeah. not to work a plan. Right. Mm. And I think that's vital, that it's good yeah. to pray, it's good to give, but we need to know how to, to, to write a plan and to stick to a plan. Yeah. Isn't that true, Margs? Like, often yeah. you'll hear people say, uh, in fact, Christians who have been Christians a long time can say, well, I've tithed, yeah. I've tithed 10%. For 20 years now, and yeah. look at my life. It's still yeah. on a mess. I love the thought that, that the three of these time, talent, treasure are actually interconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah they totally are. So um, that's often what you said as, as a thought that people have. Hey, how I'm tithing. How come God's not blessing me financially? But the thing with God is that He never does anything that's going to ruin us. Okay, so He wants to um, He wants us to have developed a platform in our lives through stewarding not just our treasure, our money, but also our time and our talent that he can land his blessing on. Mm. Okay, so that takes work, that takes effort, that mm. takes planning and thought about these three areas, our time, our talents and our treasure. And Stu's actually brilliant with time. I've had to learn, I've learned a, a few things um, about managing my time through watching my husband, but he's probably one of the guys that can get the most things done in yeah. one day and he writes me lists. I go like this. Yeah. <laughs> but, That's yeah. a good question to discuss in your groups, though. Time, how, how well do you steward time, talent, and treasure? How well do you steward it? If someone was to look at your uh, at your calendar or your diary and they were, they were able to see where your time went, how well would you rank with those sorts of things? Good question to discuss in your groups. But Sue, back to you. What what is it about time? Give us an example. I mean, you're a busy guy. I imagine you're pulled yeah. in lots of different areas with family and, and business and church and all these things. How do you do it? How yeah. do you do it well? Yeah, I mean, it is important to manage your time well. Uh, in saying that, um, I think we everybody has the same amount of time. Right. It's just what you do with 24 it. 24 hours a day. If you're... Um, um, sitting at home at night watching Real Housewives of Auckland, um, <laughs> you know, you're probably not going to um, 
achieve the fullness of, of God's plan for your life. You know, what, what are you doing with your time? It's, a good, it's all good to relax and enjoy yourself, and I certainly do. But um, I think things like um, TV, Facebook, uh, how much time are you putting into that stuff? Because I think what I've noticed is that your creativity, your ideas, your inspiration come, for me anyway, when I'm relaxed. Right. So um, if you're filling all your time out with electronics, you're not going to get that inspiration or that revelation that God has for you. So I, I think that, that that's vital that we actually um, get away from all that stuff and spend some time on the bigger picture, not just getting caught up day to day on the little right. things. Right. A few sacred cows there, so you're touching on electronics. <laughs> um, <clears throat> myself included. That's but right. how... how it's not simply a matter though of getting a diary and going, right, I'm going to go out and get a, get a moleskin and I'm, going to, and I'm going to write stuff down, I'm going to plan my life. You're actually saying you've got, to, you've got to think about planning in leisure activities and things that actually refresh you as well in, in your time. Oh, most definitely. Right. So I call it a default diary. So the first thing I do is I'll have a goal, a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, a BHAG for a BHAG. Yeah. <laughs> study uh, yeah. So that's, that's what I want to achieve in maybe 10 years. And then I'll break that down to annually how I'm going to get there and then right down to, to monthly. Now, it sounds very complex and hard, but it's not. Every month, I simply have a piece of paper on my desk and I write down what I want to achieve in that month. In the end of the month, um, I look at my successes and I plan for the next month. And I think just a month-to-month -month goal right. really helps you to stay grounded and it helps to stay, uh, keep you on a path, basically. Good. Mm. I think for you, if you're at home, you, know, you may think that's the way Stu works and that's fine, and that's maybe different to the way that I would work or the way that Margot would work, but probably good to have someone in your world. Good question to ask in your group is who, if you can't do that by yourself, and I know a lot of people can't, have someone in your world that is a bit further ahead yeah. of you in that part of the journey yes. to help you with some of those things, yeah? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. While sure. we're talking about money, if I could also mention stickability. Right. So, uh, sorry, money, time, time, time management. Yeah. Um, that is, um, I've seen over the years a lot of people very talented, very clever, but never really um, achieve breakthrough in any area of their life. And when, when I look at it, it's because they haven't stuck at something, they haven't right. persevered. When it's got too hard or they've seen another better, quicker way to make money, they've jumped and they've kept jumping. Whereas if you stand back and had just stuck at one thing longer, I think they would have seen um, more success. So right. I think stickability and perseverance is something that I think is key. That's great. And again, great thing to discuss in your groups. Are you, are, you, are you one of those people that do float from thing to thing to thing? And I believe that you know, God is a God of order. The Bible tells us that. He's a God of principles. And, and it's, it's a line upon line, precept upon precept that we build yeah. on. Um, Margot, you mentioned something just before about God wanting to land his blessing. And yeah. I, I sort of jumped over, but can you just expand a bit yeah, on that? What does that sure. mean? Yeah, sure. So there's a verse, um, Old Testament, I think it's, I did used to know, but I do numbers, I think, but it talks about the eyes of the Lord range to and fro. Um, Deuteronomy 28. If oh, I, if hey, Deuteronomy. Memory serves. Is it memory serves. Okay. So check it up at home. I don't know. So is it? The eyes of the Lord range to and fro, um, seeking those whose hearts are fully His. And I think... The whole idea that God is watching is important when it comes to um, talking about landing his blessing. So when we steward our lives well, when we invest time um, looking after what we're doing every day, our talents, developing ourselves, who are we, what's inside us, and managing our money, our treasure, then we're um, providing a very stable foundation and platform for God to land his blessing on. Because as I said before, God doesn't like, doesn't want to ruin us and... Um, We'll talk later about wine and wineskins, but if if we're all looking for the quick, you know, to get rich quick kind of a deal, aren't we? And the whole lotto thing, you know, why can't I just make money real quick? Why can't God just give me a million bucks and then my problems will be solved? But the fact is, if he did, most of us would implode. Most <laughs> of us wouldn't know what to do with that money. Yeah. We'd spend it badly or invest it wrongly. And so we need to build slowly a stable foundation through stewardship. Um, and then God, it catches his eye and that's when he'll begin to lend the blessing on our life. Yeah. That's a great thought, great thought. And again, good thing to discuss is, is your life the kind of life where God would want to land his blessing upon? I think it's actually a great thought. And if not, well, how can we take steps of faith over the next four weeks, I believe, to actually enable God to land his blessing on our life? Final thought for both of you, if you can. So faith, faith is about doing. You know, faith without works is dead, the Bible tells us. So we've got to actually do something. I, I love it when I can have a, some practical stuff to go, well, how can I actually outwork that? So what is it, Stu, about 
faith being a verb. Faith needs to be outworked. Otherwise, it's not faith. It's just a thought. It's just a, well, God can just make it all happen. Yeah. Yeah. But what is it about actually doing something that enables that faith to come alive? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as I said earlier, we're taught to pray but not to follow a plan. I think that's a vital part of Scripture, that we're actually called to take steps, steps of faith. Now, um, Pastor Sam calls this taking faith steps, not faith leaps. So we always want to be advancing. We always want to be taking steps forward, but not taking crazy risks to get rich quick. As Margot said, there is no quick get rich quick in the Bible. It's not there, okay? It's about taking steps and steadily growing, okay? So um, important is to take faith Steps, not faith yeah, leaps. Yeah. We don't take crazy risks. But you know, another great principle um, or, or, or factor that comes into this is as we're taking steps, we're placing ourselves in a place where we have to depend on God. And I think that's really important. Isaiah 54, it says, enlarge the place of your tent. Okay? And basically make room, take steps, take little risks and allow room for God to fill it. God to do his, his bit. Great. Mags, final thoughts from you, just around faith being needing to be outworked. Yeah, so, I mean, Stu's right. We are often taught to pray but not work a plan. And uh, it is just really important that we we realise that we need to outwork our faith, that we can't... Because what I I do tend to see with people is that they um, almost mislabel their laziness as faith. Mm. Ouch. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, ouch, ouch myself. Um, so instead of actually working a plan, setting things in place, disciplining themselves, they fall back and they go, God, all I need to do is pray and I'll stand here like this and you will provide everything. And God is waiting for us to set, as I said, a platform, work a plan and he will begin to do something. Great. Mm. Great thoughts. Uh, great to talk about stewardship. One thing would be great is, you, again, talking about, just recapping, we're talking about steps of faith, not leaps of faith. So maybe this week, why don't you go away in your groups and have you have one financial goal, one personal goal, one spiritual goal that you can come back and actually discuss with the group the next week. I think would be a great uh, bit of homework for you for, for this week as well. And uh, also Deuteronomy 28 is not Deuteronomy 28. I've just remembered it. It's actually 2 Chronicles 16.9. That's the verse that you need to remember. Uh, not Deuteronomy 28. I don't want any false doctrine here. <laughs> and I think that's important to know. But we'll have, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Mind your money. Thank you.